Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bits and Bites. All things consumable from all the places you want to be. Late night edition. Gotta edit that out. There's no time here on the internet. That's right, Bits and Bites, baby. United States edition. You know what that means. United States edition means one thing. 50 states. 50 weeks. What week is it? Actually had to check. Week 31. Work your alphabet. Check them fingers. Check them letters. Where does it put us? Week 31 puts us in the great and questionable state of New Mexico. New Mexico! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Bits and Bites. United States edition, week 31, New Mexico. Per usual, we have the lovely flag. If you know anything about the show, this is one of my favorite style of flags. Very simple, very colorful. Just one little questionable thing in there. We don't know what it is. It looks like some kind of strange marking. I don't know if it's new or Mexico, but we like it either way. Lots of food in New Mexico to talk about. Maybe not lots, but some. Some beverages in New Mexico to talk about over here. Fantaxico. Fan- I just said Fantaxico. Didn't even mean it. We're saying Fantaxico all episode now. That's Fantaxico. Ah, New Mexico, you're great. It's been a night. And we're back at it. New Mexico's here. Week 31. We push on. Tough finding some stuff. We may have a guest. We may not. Who even knows anymore? The one thing we know is there's some fast, hard facts we want to hit about New Mexico. Bring that shit up. The fast facts. Nickname, Land of Enchantment. I don't know about that. Statehood, 1912-47 state. A recent one. Uh, population as of July 2015, we got just about 2 milli. Capital is Santa Fe. The biggest city is Albuquerque, and the abbreviation is NM. Hmm. State bird, everyone's favorite part of the show. The Greater Roadrunner. What? This is a real thing? Like the Roadrunner from our youth is, uh... Or my youth, rather, is a real thing. Get out of here. Well, there it is. The Greater Roadrunner. Uh, that's not what the Roadrunner looks like to me. The, the Roadrunner to me is uh, this guy. This is what I'm thinking. But, I mean, I guess that's not... That's not the state bird. I'm confused. Obviously, that's why they call it the Greater Roadrunner. So the greater Roadrunner is really this thing, which decisively does not look like the Roadrunner of my youth. Is there a resemblance? Maybe. A little bit. A little bit. Yes, it's almost like the green and red chili debate that we'll be getting into. Maybe it is a little bit, and maybe it's not. Who the hell knows? And then, what is it? Hold on. What is the uh, state flower? How do we forget the yucca? The yucca. Show me yucca. There it is. I think that's the same plant that yucca, like yucca chips you could eat. You know, they cook up or mash, right? I think. I don't know. It's a state plant. I feel like I should know that. Let's look. Like, isn't the root of that the edible thing, or is that a different thing? I don't know. Lower. Thank you. The Yucca house plant. Do they need full sun? I'm not good at keeping plants alive. This isn't a plant show, but you could eat a yucca. And you know what? In my research, it didn't say shit about yucca in New Mexico. So next slide. There it is. Old New Mexico. Not quite sure what's, why they call it New Mexico. I don't have those kind of hard facts for you. Let's see what the internet says. The New Mexico is a state in the southwestern United States. It is one of the mountain states of the southern Rocky Mountains, sharing the Four Corners region of the western United States with Utah, Colorado, and I do know it's Arizona. Yes, the Four Corners. I forgot about that. One of the only states where the Four Corners meet, as you can see here, and you can literally stand, if you've seen Breaking Bad, you've, you've seen this scene, where you can stand on the Four Corners monument and be in all four states at once. 
Look at that happy family being in four states at once. Cool. Good job, family. But we're not worried about the other three lesser states right now. We're here for big fucking New Mexico energy. New Mexico surrounded Colorado to the north. A little tippy tip of Oklahoma over there to the east. Big Texas energy all around it. Mexico to the south. Arizona, Utah, and Colorado on the four corners in the, in the northwest. Well, thirsty. Let's get right to it. Some of the facts that I have about New Mexico. Let's not break another champagne glass, shall we? Wine country, question mark, question mark. Well, you would know it's wine country. If you remember our Arizona episode, there's some great wine out in Arizona that we got into. Um, that was one of the early episodes. I forget what week that is. I could pull up my notes here, but I'm not gonna. Uh, so great wines out in Arizona, and it'd see, it, would re, it would stand a reason that New Mexico could do the same thing. And apparently, that is what they're doing. So they have a lot of wineries out there. We'll deep dive into that a little bit. Uh, what else do I have here? Uh, towels. Pueblo inhabited in, inhabited for over a thousand years. Okay, there's a town that's been inhabited for over a thousand years out there. Maybe we'll look into that if we get bored. Um, there's more PhDs per capita than any other state in New Mexico. I don't know what kind of stat that is. Five different states viewable from um, the Capulin Volcano. I don't know where that is. Let's. I mean, we can look that up. That's fine. Moving on. Las Vegas, New Mexico. Didn't know that existed. Uh, Doc Holliday was a dentist there and shot somebody there. Okay, cool fact. Uh, first atomic bomb went off in New Mexico. And um, teasing the uh, other show about stupid laws and stupid states, there's no legal dancing without a sombrero. That seems insensitive in this day, but let's just move on to the next thing. Food. New Mexico, when you think about it, there's only one thing you can think about. And it's hatch green chilies. Hatch green chilies are the thing in New Mexico. They grow them, they eat them, they love them. And even all the way up to Colorado, I'm assuming some of the surrounding states, you can get your hands on these big ass hatch chili. Let me show you the roasters. There's video. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's video. These are the roasters. There's dudes on the side of the street. Well, that's a tabletop loser sized one. I'm talking, give me a video of like some hardcore fucking dude. Just run that in the back. Yeah, here, let's put this one. We don't want your audio. Uh, so, you know, these guys, they grow the hatch green chilies out there, which is a specific type of chili. And on the side of the road, that's what they do. You can see it right there, literally all over in the season. You pull over, and there's dudes with these open flames roasting these big vats like this. You walk up, go give me a bag. You can buy anything from a small little paper bag to a massive, massive bag, like as much as you want. They're just out there with pounds and pounds of the shit. Fire roasting side, side of the road. It's a hell of a hustle. Hell of a way to make a living. Uh, you know, but someone's got to do it. Oh, thanks for the follow there, guy. Um, you know, that's what they do out there in New Mexico. I saw them doing that in Colorado. That I know. I've never been to New Mexico. I can't speak to it. But your boy's thirsty and your boy's parched. So let's get into some of this New Mexican juice that I got my hands on. I have two bottles of Jacqueline Leon American Sparkling Wine. Now, there's a rosé and there's a brut. I don't know which I'm feeling more right now. Something tells me they're both going to be pretty similar. Uh, sparkling wine, of course. We can't call it that, but it's made in the champagne method. Uh, 75 Chardonnay, 25 Pinot Noir on this one. American made. And this one's 100% Pinot Noir. Um, so I'm going to save the, the rosé one for, for a nice sunny day outside. And I'm going to get into this brute because it's nighttime and that's what we're doing. Uh, let see some... We, uh, thanks for following. What's up, chat? What you making? Uh, looks better with the green New Mexico on it. Good call. Yes. Well, what are we making? That's a good question. You want to see me trashed? Well, stay tuned. Anything's possible, but this is a stunt bottle. Um, uh, let's get into this. Jacqueline Leon Brute. Let's pour it, and then I'll tell you a little bit what I know about it. I looked into... Jacqueline Leon uh, Winery. Everyone knows how to open a, a bottle here, right? 
like a nun's fart, right? Oh, saber. Uh, it's the ASMR portion of the show. Let's let's lower the music a little bit so you can hear the pop. That was pretty good. Not quite a nun's fart, but pretty good. I'll take it. Uh, American style, uh, American made champagne. I can see a little bit of uh, solid sugars on the top here. So there's definitely added residual sugars to this. All good. Let's pour it in this nice uh, coop we got here. And toast to New Mexico. And we'll start eating. We got green chilies. We got red chilies. We got Christmas fucking chilies. We got huevos rancheros on deck. Uh, yeah, I put on my most, um, I don't know, I feel like in New Mexico maybe you should be wearing, like, a turquoise or something. I don't really have much uh, in the way of turquoise jewelry. Uh, this shirt felt, felt right. I don't know, I went with it. This seems like a New Mexican kind of vibe shirt. Right? Kind of. I don't know. Uh, cheers to everybody out there. Cheers to the chat. Let me know what you're drinking. Let's get in here. And, uh, this is the Jacqueline Leon, uh, uh Brut. Bub. Nice, nice carbonation on this. Hopefully it's not too sugary. Cheers. I can get behind that. Not bad. Not too sweet. Doesn't taste like too much in the way of added sugar. Nice carbonation on that. Can we show it in the goods cam? Oh, check this out. I don't think I showed you guys the new goods cam. Peep that shit. Always evolving in the studio. Can I show the bubs on that? Really nice carbonation on that. Cheers to you. Cheers to the room. Put it in the room. Let me know what you're drinking. Oh, also, did I put the number up? I'm taking phone calls if it works. Fuck it. Serious calls only, obviously. Definitely no prank calls. Definitely uh, not people make believing they're from New Mexico. Definitely not. Uh, let's see if it works. Looks like it does. 843 Rebel TV. We are live and we are taking your phone calls. We're talking all things New Mexico and probably whatever the fuck you want. Um, that's what we're doing. All right, we chat a little bit about what's in the book. Uh, the Jacqueline Leon. This is, uh, I looked up the producer Jacqueline Leon. Um, oh, no. Did it? Let's see. Hold on. I could probably adjust that. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's picking up the. Oh, we have to change that. Good, good call, producer. That's better. How's that? Yeah, I, I have the other camera. I hooked it up. This should be better now, right? Uh, and then it obviously picked up the uh, audio inputs from the uh, the other one, and I did not turn it off. Good catch there. Good catch, chat. Um, you know, this is what happens when you fucking redo the studio every week, you know? Shit's always different. We're getting better. We're dialing it. One day it'll be set. And it'll be, this is just how it is. Very simple. This is pretty tasty. Uh, the Chaco Leon. Um, I wanted to bring it up because it's the uh, one of the only things I could find from New Mexico. But apparently uh, it's made by Gruit, which you may have heard of. Um, Gruit Winery, specializing in method champenois. Sparkling wines. Family owner run. The New Mexico based winery produces Pinot Noir and Chardonnay based sparkling wines and a small collection of still wines. With roots originating from Gilbert Gruitt's Champagne House in Bethel, Fraun. Uh, more than 25 vintages later, Gruitt Winery has achieved unprecedented acclaim and remains a favor to the nation's top sommeliers. Well, I don't know about that, but... Uh, this is good. I don't know if I've had the Gruitt stuff. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I feel like I've seen those bottles. Um, this is made by Gruitt uh, for... Uh, Total Wine, which is the place I purchased it. So I just bought it because it was made in New Mexico. Uh, little did I know that Gruel was also from there. I would have picked that up if I saw it, just to uh, go one up on the hierarchy, but uh, I did not uh, do that. Yeah, Gruel uh, is super popular. I see that chat. It's, um, I just haven't, I don't think, I mean, I've, I probably, I'm sure I've had it. Uh, but this is a special one made for them by Total Wine, which, spoiler alert, is where I purchased them. So that's why I have these. So I don't know if they brand them for that for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. It's a cute little bottle. I mean, it's not bad. I'll show you again in the thing. The bottle's nice. Uh, and, and the Brut, you know, as it should be, is not too sweet, which I like. Um, I'm not mad at it. But uh, we'll get into this, and we'll watch the video on this. Um... But I do have some some food items here I want to get into before they get cold because I just whipped them up. And I think it's time we talk about them. The green chilies is a ubiquitous thing 
in New Mexico. Diced green chilies. This is a hatch brand. You could buy pretty much at least anywhere around here. This is made in New Mexico. This is the uh, organic version of what I believe is in this can, the Rio Luna. We could look up those brands also. And then there was another one here that looked real nice. Zia Hatch Chili Company. I like that I could see what was in there. Oh, nice big chunks of hatch. Um... Hatch green chilies are just really delicious, and, and they're always fire roasted, and uh, they have a real depth of flavor. They're like Anaheim chilies, but I don't know. They're really nice. And then uh, Hatch also makes a fire roasted taco sauce, apparently. I couldn't resist it because I do. I have a sweet spot for the shitty Ortega uh, taco sauce that's red and like this, and I haven't tried this, but I just wanted to buy it. It's made in New Mexico, so I put it there. And they also have Hatch red enchilada sauce, which I did pick up and uh, use. Now, one of the th foods, you know, there's a lot of ubiquitous foods, but green chili. Now, I didn't have the chance to make a green chili. Sorry. I wasn't going to spend all that. Green chili is almost like a... Arizona, New Mexico green chili is like a, a, a mashup. I'm going to butcher it, but it's kind of like a pozole meets a, like a pork stew, you know, Southwest style or something like that. I don't know how else to explain it. We're not having that. There's probably a million ways to argue about it. There's a green version. There's a red version, but they both use um, a chili sauce. And if you go down to eat in New Mexico, you go get breakfast somewhere, you go get some huevos rancheros, um, they always ask you if you want your shit sauced. And you do. And generally, people go, I think, all the time out of the, re out of the green sauce because they want the hatch sauce. They want that hatch hitter. Um, but there is the option to get the red sauce. Now, the red sauce made by Hatch here says that it uses um, organic spices, blah, 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 cane sugar, starch, baker's yeast. Uh, it's tomatoes and chili. So, you know, this is the, I would assume, some real deal fucking red enchilada sauce banger, you know? So um, how are we going to consume it? Well... Just so happens we have some freshly made hatch green chili, as best as I could make, because I'm not from New Mexico, um, sauce that we would put on. The hatch red enchilada sauce, ready to go. Some uh, crema, if we need it. And then uh, some, what I would consider some classic huevos rancheros, where you have your uh, fried egg, your beautifully fried egg that I put a little salt, pepper, a little dried episode on, uh, on top of a uh, tortilla that has some fried, refried, uh, refried black beans underneath, if you could see it. Um, and then I just put an avocado on there because I had it and uh, a lime in case we need it. Um, I almost don't want the avocado on there for what we're going to do, but it looked pretty for the presentation and fucking avocado is delicious. So, so go far. I'm going to take this avocado off right now because we're going to do, we're going to do the bit. Come here, you. We're going to do the bit. Now, from what I'm told, What I'm told is if you go eat in New Mexico and you're getting eggs, you can get them what they call Christmas style, where you don't have to select the green or the red. You get both. We're going to uh, look into the Christmas style. We're going to um, pour both sauces. We're going to taste both sauces first. Then we're going to pour them both. Make a Christmas-style fried situation. And uh, we're going to eat it. And uh, I'm, I don't know. I, I want to put it on, uh, some video on the back. Hopefully, it shows me how to do it the right way. And um, while I dig in and do it, I mean, there, everyone makes huevos red shows a little bit different. This is the quick late-night version. Um, I don't want to, obviously, bake it out unless you top it with this. Now, this was made about, I don't know, 10 minutes ago, right before I came on air. I fried up the egg and put it all together. That's right, your boy's good. Um, I thought there'd be a video. Like, where's where's Guy Fieri like yelling about fucking rancheros? Like, what? Like, yeah, put him on Christmas style New Mexico Guy Fieri. Like, put that asshole on to the back. Full throttle Christmas special. No, <laughs> the knockoff. That's funny. New Mexican food, sopapilla. We'll just keep this guy. This fucking guy can just talk in the middle. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, I, I I want just a video in the corner with the... Or let's just do this. Christmas-style huevos. 
It's a picture of something. I had an image, you know. Like show me, show me the Christmas style. That, that kind of looks like mine. That's kind of like what we're talking. That's kind of like what we're vibing with. Yeah, this is the slop that I was envisioning. Mine's gonna look obviously like a prettier version of this, but this is the slop I was envisioning for what it is. And obviously they bake the shit out of it, and that you know that kind of eats like a stew, like a soup. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna taste each of these sauces independently. And we're going to see how it is. First, we're going to taste my green chili, green hatch chili using these. A little uh, tomatillo. Uh, New Mexican chili powder. I had some spices. I'm not going to lie. I'm not from New Mexico. I haven't had it. Is that reminiscent of what I would consider a salsa verde I would make? A little bit. Is it? No. Is it similar? Yes. Is it good? Yes. Is it going to be good with this? Yes. This is the canned hatch red enchilada sauce. This is what I'm excited to try. See what this is from straight from New Mexico. Okay. That's got some heat to it. Some chili vibe. I'm into it. Let's Christmas the shit out of this. So... I guess, I guess let's, just, let's, just, let's just pour them on. Christmas time, baby! I mean, that's not that. I mean, that's not that bad. Come on, dude. I'm talking midnight eggs after a long ass day. You come home to some of this. You come home to some of fucking daddy's Christmas huevos. Come on, bro. Get your life right. I ain't mad at that. That's look. That's looking goddamn pretty. So the tortilla underneath. It's from also out west. It uses some kind of out west Mexican corn, um, out west heirloom corn or something. The refried beans also have some green chili in it. And then there's my egg. So I'm just gonna get in there and get a little bit of the red with a chunk of everything and a little bit of the green. Let's see how it goes. This is fried, refried black beans with hatch green chilies. A little egg, a little tortilla, and a little chili sauce. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, all right, I get it. This is definitely a thing. I see why it's a thing. That slop that's on the screen. Sorry, I'm looking at the screen. That slop looks gross to me. We don't want that. That looks like soup. Get that out of here. You want this. This is primarily, this is like nachos, meat, sopapilla. Let's go for the green. Let's go Christmas. Oh yeah, much lighter on the green. I like it. The combo's good. That's a good combo. I'm a big fan. The real question is, are there any 24-7 diners in New Mexico that we could call? Or what time is it in New Mexico? How nice are they in New Mexico? It's 10.34? Who could we call at 10.30? Who the hell is going to be open that's not a hospitality place we're going to bother at 10.30? If we did the show earlier, you know the bit. We usually call antique stores or something. Uh, a hotel? I mean, hotels are open. Front desk at a hotel, maybe? Not the worst idea. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not even that hungry. I'm gonna keep eating those. I haven't even cracked the yolk yet. I think there's no secret that the canned hatch red enchilada sauce. I don't dig into a lot of enchilada sauce. Um, it's fire. It's really fucking good. Um, maybe I need to be eating some more enchiladas in my life or something. I don't know. That's really goddamn good. My sauce is meh. Uh, it's not bad. I'm not putting it out of the running. Just saying. I can't stop eating this. Sorry. You know, usually I take a bite and I'm done. I'm really hungry. 
start. Actually, I'm not really hungry. It's just really fucking good. Damn. I'm impressed. Dude. The huevos ranchero. I mean, I just have an old tortilla, heat it up, mashed up some fucking refried black beans, put some whole chilies in it. I would get some of this. I'm not lying. This hatch. Let's go to the website. Give me, give me some facts, bro. I'll call a hatch right now. Give me Mr. Hatch on the line. I've been buying these chilies for a while before I even had the, the whole thing and knew the bit out in New Mexico because these are delicious in a lot of items. Um, I didn't know they had a whole suite of shit, and when I saw this, I was stoked. Gotta say, it's really good. You get your hands on this can of um, red enchilada sauce. Again, something I would never buy if it wasn't for the show. Oh, look, they have a green chili enchilada sauce. If I saw that, I would have got it. That's really goddamn good. Let's see their green chili pepper products, though. Yeah, I see the cans, the green chilies. This is like what you normally see, just diced a uh, whole. Yeah, I don't, usually don't see the holes, but diced. They have jalapenos. I'm not surprised. And then the enchilada sauces. Yeah, they have a whole green chili sauce. A green chili stew, a red enchilada sauce. I wish I had the green chili sauce. I don't know what makes this the enchilada sauce. Like, uh, that seems like two, separ two, two similar things to me. Uh, red enchilada sauce. Um, tell me about it, Hatch. Mild red enchilada sauce. USD organic certified with organic ingredients. Flavorful red sauce is great on cheese and beef enchiladas. I don't need any cheese. This is just a fire. It's like... It really reminds me of the t the taco sauce. It probably tastes like this. In fact, let's put them to the test. Fire roasted taco sauce. I'd have to imagine this tastes just like the enchilada sauce because that's what the enchilada sauce tastes like to me. So if you're lying to me and this is the same shit, Hatch, you're fucking dead to me. Okay, decisively not the same. Citric component, onions in here, a little sweetness. That's definitely more like the taco situation. Damn, these are good though. One more hit. Don't mind me. Just eating on the show late night, no big deal. Wow. I'm not going to lie, it's really good. Um, yeah. And wash it down with some um, New Mexican bubbly. Ah, that's how we roll. All right, Hatch. Solid brand. I mean, um, they don't sponsor this shit, but I endorse. I'm in on Hatch. Uh, let's go to a hotel out in New Mexico. Let's get a, Let's get a late night front desk and see what they're doing. Best Western Plus Montezuma Inn. That sounds right. We're talking Christmas fucking chili with Best Western Plus Montezuma Inn. Let's go. Calling Best Western Plus Montezuma. Oh, I didn't even get my bit together. Thank you for calling Best Western Plus Montezuma Inn and Suites. This is Adriana. How can I help you? Hi, Adriana. My name is Billy, and I'm doing a like a podcast show on New Mexico and like the food and drink in New Mexico. I do a different state every week. And I was just looking into like New Mexico chili and stuff like that. And I was just trying to chat with somebody for a second about New Mexican food. Someone who's like from New Mexico. If you have a minute. I don't know if you're busy out there or what. Um, well, I am from New Mexico. Um, however, I don't eat chili you don't eat green chili in new mexico that sounds like that's sound that's i feel like that's uh <laughs> blasphemous out there almost i'm not from new mexico so i don't know much about new mexico food i just looked into it like i said every week we do a different state and we eat different food uh from the state so when i looked into it i was like oh green chili that seems to be the thing is that the thing yeah. is there something else that's bigger out there or, or am i right or wrong am i on the track 
Uh, no, no, no. You're right. Chili, chili is the big thing out here. I, I just don't like it. You don't like it. Okay, so you're not. You know, maybe your DNA is telling you. Maybe I shouldn't be out in New Mexico or something. That's fair. <laughs> uh, uh, I get, I get a lot of that. Like, oh, are you sure you're from New Mexico? You don't eat chili. What? Yeah. So. But there's other like sauces, right? Like, I feel like I was looking into. Um, like like uh, breakfast places or something. You get eggs or whatever. You can get like the red and the green sauce, and like that's different than the chili, isn't it? Well, um, chili like the the red and green sauce. Yeah, it's a little different from the chili, but it's it's still like kind of same flavor more or less. Same thing, right? I guess texture wise, it's different. I guess. Yeah, because I think at least what I would think is like the chili is like chunky with like chunks of beef and stuff. And like what I'm thinking of like huevos rancheros with sauces, like the Christmas sauce, whatever they call it. It's like li- more liquidy or whatever, like an enchilada sauce almost maybe. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I was just trying to, you know, what, is there any other great food out in New Mexico? If you're not eating that, what's your like, Oh, I don't like green chili, but this is the thing. Is there something else that's really super New Mexico that's out there? Um, to be honest with you, I don't know. That's okay. You don't have to know. This I is just, a random phone call. Yeah. I don't expect you to know all the food spots. It's okay. <laughs> um, I know I know the restaurant out here in Las Vegas that's like pretty big. It's, it's like a top traveler place. If anyone comes to New Mexico, it's called uh, Charlie's Spick and Span. Charlie's Spick and Span. All right. I've never heard yeah. of that. I'll have to look it up. Um, Spick and Span Bakery and Cafe. There it is. I see it. All right. Cool. Um, interesting. Is it good? Have you eaten there? And also, you have a state, you have a town called Las Vegas. That doesn't seem fair. There's a, there's another Las Vegas pretty close. I think it's a little <laughs> bigger. Are you, are you in Las Vegas? Did I call Las Vegas, New Mexico? I'm not yeah, even this, sure. Yeah, this is Las Vegas, New Mexico. That was at random. Cool. All right. I literally just typed in like a hotel. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. So how, I don't know. Is there anything, can I ask you one more question that's not food related about New Mexico since you're from New Mexico, right? Yeah. So I'm from New Jersey, and the way like I describe it to people who've never been, it's like there's kind of like three parts. There's like North Jersey, which is like close to New York kind of, so it has like New York kind of vibes. It's like faster pace and stuff like that. Central Jersey's got a lot of shore towns, and it's kind of like you know near the shore, and there's a couple mountains if you go out west. And then South Jersey's closer to like Philadelphia, Cape May, and Atlantic City and stuff like that. Like, how would you break up New Mexico as a state? You know, would you say it's like Albuquerque than everything else, or is there like corners to it or regions? Like, what would you say? So, um, I mean, we have like the like a little cool like it's the call it the four corners here in right. New Mexico. So it's like where New Mexico meets with Arizona, Colorado. And I believe Utah. Right. I think I saw that in Breaking Bad. Yeah, they have that 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 here, so that's pretty cool. Um, I think the the Grand Canyon is another like location people would bring up when they talk about New Mexico. Right, because you got a big chunk of the Grand Canyon there. I see it on the map. Right. I forgot about yeah. that. Cool. Um, all right. I mean, do you like New Mexico? Is New Mexico a cool state? I've never been, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I, th- I think it's more so like a little bit of a uh, like a sightseeing type of deal in terms of nature and stuff. Right. Yeah, a lot of nature, a lot of mountains. Charlie mm-hmm. Spick and Span Cafe, the Four Corners. Looks like there's a lot of Indian reservation kind of situations. And, yeah. And Breaking Bad. I mean, that's really one. And Roswell. There's Roswell. I forgot that was there. That's like the alien corner, yeah. right? That's what they do there. Yep. All right, I don't know. Is there anything any anything people should know about New Mexico that, that I don't know, maybe they wouldn't know? Maybe there isn't. I don't know. Um, not that I could think of. All right, well, that's cool. Well, again, just trying to get some information about New Mexico. Thanks. It's definitely better than nothing. Appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, what was your name again? Adriana. Adriana. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, You're welcome. I uh, really appreciate your, your time. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Have a good night. You too. Well, Adriana showed up. Sorry we woke you up, Adriana, but, you know, we're here. Digging back into the Huevos, it was a lot of work. Oh, yeah.
Cheers. Cheers to Adriana. Mm. Honestly, I didn't even think about that. Hotels are probably great late night call. If you think I didn't bring another egg up, you'd be crazy. Also, so. First egg isn't always great, but, you know, gotta be prepared. All right, we don't gotta eat this one, but this one looks pretty at least. Well, we're one for one. Charlie Spick and Span, what's this place about? She told us about it, she says, this is the big place, it's closed. And you know, we don't call restaurants, we don't fuck with restaurants, they're very busy trying to fucking stay alive out there. We learned our lesson trying to call restaurants. Charlie's Bakery and Cafe, I've never heard about it. But my guess is Guy Fieri has showed up here. Uh, meeting and greeting place of Las Vegas. We only open seven to four, Jesus. All right, well, the website makes it look pretty mediocre. Let's look at the menu. Well, let's see what the, um, let's see, where's the, where's the fucking, um, Huevos, bruh, specialty plate. Breakfast tacos, grande breakfast, heart attack. Oh, that's good. Huevos ranchos, corn tortillas, covered in beans, chili, two eggs, cheese, and choice of tortilla or toast. This is exactly what I just made. Fucking beautiful. I'm so good. Machata. Roast beef, eggs to end this is no 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 no. We're not we're not going to the deep end here. Shit for the kids. What do you got for lunch? Guacamole and chips, taquitos. Alright, big breakfast place, whatever. Not gonna lie, Charlie's Bakery and Cafe is not blowing my socks off. Nice pie. I mean that's the best heart we could cut, really. For our for our main page, that's the be that's the shape. Okay, I mean it's fine. You know, we're, sometimes you don't got time to cut the heart rate. You put the picture on your website. It's fine. Sometimes you have your child make the Hello Kitty um, cookies in the back, and you put them on your website and say you're a professional. I don't know. Maybe that's what you do there. Maybe this is New Mexico vibe. Don't know. Sometimes it looks like you buy cinnamon buns from Costco and, and they get flattened by the case of tomatoes and green hatch chilies that were in your truck. I don't know. That's what it looks like. Sometimes you cover up your mistake donuts with sprinkles. I don't know. Anything's possible out here. We're in New Mexico. All right. Go to Charlie's Bakery Cafe. It looks like a lot of fun. Pico and sour cream in the in the rancheros. Yeah, I'm into that. Pico with the texture. I got sour cream here. I just don't think it needs it. Maybe on round two if I go in and I'll eat a little, a little, a little crema on that. All right, Charlie's Bakery and Cafe. Go visit real cool, nice. Let's go see if we can hit another hotel. Maybe we get someone who knows a little bit more about the food. Um, I don't know why it keeps going there. Late night hotel seems to be uh, not a bad idea. <clears throat> I think the cheaper the better. Let's go to the southwest. The old Motel 6 in Lordsburg, New Mexico. Let's do that. <clears throat> Calling Motel 6, Lordsburg, New Mexico. <clears throat> Sorry. Motel Six Lordsburg, how may I have you? Hey, how you doing, man? Uh, my name is Billy, and I'm doing a show on the food and drink in New Mexico, and I was just trying to talk to somebody who lives in New Mexico about it, if you've got a minute. If not, all good. I'm sorry? Uh, my name is Billy, and I'm doing like a podcast that I do every week on different states and the food and drink, and I'm just trying to uh -huh. talk to somebody from New Mexico about like the food and drink out there. And I'm not from New uh -huh. Mexico, so I'm just trying to see who's out there and... If you got a minute, just got a couple questions about uh, green chili and shit like that people seem to love out there. <laughs> uh, sure. I don't know if you're busy, I don't want to keep you. This isn't a telemarketing nah. call. I just got random a uh, random call. Yeah, no, nah, that's cool. I haven't I haven't been busy for a while, so I'm pretty sure I could shoot the shit for a little bit. Cool. All right, so quick. Are you from New Mexico, born and raised or whatever? 
Yeah, pretty much. All right, cool. So I've never been, so forgive the ignorance, right? Uh, right. We, like I said, every week we do a different state. This week's New Mexico. We talk about the food and the drink. The food and the drink that I got, green chili seems to be the bit out there. Is that the thing? Is that the number? If you're talking New Mexico, this is the food. Is that it? Um, yeah, I mean, that's mainly what we're known for, the chili, yeah. But, I mean, we're pretty close to the border, too, so the Mexican food just strictly is really good on this over here in the end, too. I would have to think you've got great Mexican food out there, for sure. Because you're, yeah. I'm looking, you're in the southwest out there, so you're definitely much closer to Mexico, so. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Um, that's probably one thing you want to check out the most out here is, when you're closer to home like that, the food's going to be way better. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. Definitely. Um, all right, cool. So the Mexican food is fire down there. I get that. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, the green yeah, chili. Yeah, I mean, huh? I was going to say the green chili is a thing. Like that, I, I know it's a thing, at least. Maybe it's not like the best. but. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't put green chili on everything. I think it's mostly known for like maybe like at the burgers. Because I, I remember I saw a video one time saying that. Uh, I saw a video saying, like, the most popular fast food in every state, right? Right. And they did mention in New Mexico that, you know, the fast food is really known for having the green chili on it, like a Blake Slaughter Burger down here. And so that's what it's kind of really known for. They just throw it on the burgers a lot. It's kind of like a tourist thing, but we don't necessarily put it on everything. You know what I mean? We use red chili for stuff. Uh, it's meaning just Mexican stuff that happens here. Right. Not just the green chili, you know what I mean? There's a burger chain, you said? What was the name of it? Oh, no, 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 no. The, it's called Blake's Lauder Burger. Oh. That's actually pretty popular. I'm pretty sure if you search it up on YouTube, you can find that video I was talking about. Blake's like Lauder Burger. That's the restaurant in every state. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Um, awesome. Um, okay, cool. So, green chili, not so much. Mexican food, big all throughout the state, pretty much. Mexican food? I guess so, right? Pretty close down there. So. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's... It's New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Um, Very much. So I'll ask you the other thing I ask people, because I've never been to Mexico, so I don't really know. So, like, in New Jersey, that's where I'm from, I could break it up kind of into, like, three regions. I could say North Jersey, Central, and South, right? North Jersey's a little closer to New York. It's got, like, New York vibes, densely populated, you know, faster pace. Central Jersey is, yeah. like, short towns and people who commute to New York and maybe and stuff like that. And South Jersey is, like, Cape May, Atlantic City, and Philadelphia kind of vibes. Like, how yeah, would you— See, I haven't—I'm sorry. I just don't mean to but I haven't even been over there at all, like, at, at all on that side. So, like, I, I actually wouldn't mind going over there just to try the food, too, honestly. I mean, we got great food in New Jersey. It's a different world in New Mexico. We got Mexican food, but it definitely ain't going to be as good as yours. Be different, probably. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, I watched some random things, like, with random foods, like pizza. I'm yeah. pretty sure you guys got some pretty good pizza. Oh, the pizza there. will murder. Pizza, we murder the whole country. New Jersey, <laughs> between New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut, we're murdering pizza. You, no one talk, no one comes close. About, Connecticut pizza is yeah. a secret, though. It's like, I, watch, I watch David uh, Portnoy. He oh, yeah. yeah. Portnoy loves, Porno loves his pizza. That's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. I, I've, I've always been curious out there, too. Like, like I want to try, uh, what is it called? That, the restaurant like up there in the New York area, it's, uh, I think it's called Shake Shack, right? Shake Shack's a big thing, yeah. It's like a mini chain. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one thing I want to try. Big Shake Shack's time. good. Shake Shack. it, it's a great fast food burger, for sure. It's really good. You can easily get it out here, too. Like, it's in the city, but there's some in New Jersey, like on the parkway and shit, so you could get your hands on it pretty easy out here. Yeah, that's something I want to try. I, I think they... I mean, I'm, I love people say like, oh, Mexican food's like probably a top notch over American and stuff. But I, on the other hand, as a as a Mexican myself, I I get curious about other foods too. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure there's a lot of American foods here that are pretty good. There's good uh, American, f dude. All foods are great, right? We obviously agree on that. But there's you know cultural foods different. Like you can't compare Mexican food to weird the, weird American yeah. food. It's different. It's, you know, yeah. sometimes you want. You know, uh, chicken tinga tacos, and sometimes you want to crush a greasy burger. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, that is definitely, yeah. <laughs> two different things. Two, I, that's what, two that's different I love about America, man. Our food. The food right here is just so diverse, too. Kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's the best cool, It's the best part. Every I, Like I said, I do every week a different state, and we focus on yeah. the food and the drink, and it's always different foods and shit everywhere. So it's, I always just try to find, like, the thing that the state does. That's why I said the green chili, because that's, like, the thing New Mexico does, right? Yeah, that's. I, I could definitely, you know, agree that that's one thing we're known for. Yeah, like, like no other state's around. doing that. So that's, like, a unique thing to the state, at least, even if it's not. Can, can I ask you something? Though? Yeah, like, have sure. You, have you done more than half the states? Um, I start in the beginning of the year. I do one a week, so I'm on week 31. So this is week 31, yeah. yeah. I go alphabetically, so this is New Mexico. Next week's New York. Yeah, have you found one that's maybe, like, 
strike your curiosity like more than others yet? Yeah, okay. man. I mean, there. I talked to some people from states that I haven't that I have been to that like told me about cool stuff out there. Like um, Florida comes to mind. Like I talked to this like beer blogger that was in Florida, and she was telling me about all the stuff that's in Orlando. Like Orlando's like Disney stuff, right? Like I've been there before, but probably just for Disney shit. But she was telling me about all these other cool little towns like throughout Orlando with these little breweries and stuff like that. Like it sounded like a, yeah. I wanted to book a flight and go hang out in these little neighborhoods. Like it sounded like a great time. That sounds badass, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> I mean there's really cool. Sh- I mean there's cool shit everywhere. And again, I started doing this because it was like pandemic, couldn't go anywhere, and I was traveling and abandoned yeah, shit, yeah. and I wanted to get out I was more. I gotta mention that too. Yeah, the whole pandemic thing really shut a lot of stuff down. I mean, yeah. it really turns away like the fun, especially if you. If you just put your ear out there to what's going on, you know what I'm saying? You're hearing how worse it's getting, and it's just... Yeah, it's wow, not the it best. You know, it makes you not want to go out more, you know what I mean? Like, Scary. It's, 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 I don't know, man. It's like Sca- a little war thing going on with the pandemic, because there's the people that want to just go out already and do everything, you know what I'm saying, and travel and stuff, but it's just like you can't no one, be in denial that, that people are, you know, getting sick and stuff, man. It's a, like, you can't, it's you know a bad... It's real. There's no question. I mean, I don't know who's our. I guess there's people that say it's not real, but you know, it's real. <laughs> but yeah, everyone is also I'm, everyone's I've, sick I've of it though. I've had people tell me online, dude. I've had people, random people online tell me. Like, I have a Facebook. I've had people tell me like, yo, like there was a big old gathering recently where I live, and nobody got COVID there. It's, COVID's a joke at this point. I mean, like, Whoa, that's pop. There's like. Look, the newspapers around here, this kid's dying, man. <laughs> I mean, you could, you can get together with people and not get it. I know that's happened to people, but yeah, that doesn't mean it's not there. You, I mean, you guys stay cautiously and stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's that's, that's awesome. I totally approve of that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, you guys are playing it safe and all that. It's just cool. weird. It's, I, mean, I, I definitely wouldn't hate on that. It's just like if people are just, if you know people are being unvaccinated and being careless, and you know they're walking around sick and stuff. It's just like, come on, you're not, is, is you're not we, actually looking at it. Then that could, that could be a problem. You know what I mean? It's, it's weird times, that's for sure. It's just weird times. Yeah, definitely, man. I, I hate how it just, this has this, this really split up a lot of people, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah, no, a lot of people, you know, but it's shit, but there's always, I had said this too to someone the other day. I was like, there's always stuff that makes people like polarized to sides and like always fight. There's always like red versus blue and shit like that. Like, yeah, you know, anything that people could get their hands on to like point at someone else and make different teams. Yeah, like, man. they love that. But, Some people love that shit. I'm. I'm just like, guys, let's just get safe and move on. Like, what are we doing? You know? <laughs> exactly, man. And the whole thing with those, like, the red and blue fighting all the time. I hate it. So I can't. Like, Yo, everybody just needs to pick up, like, a blunt, smoke that a little bit, chill out. Just relax. That's what man. I'm talking about. <laughs> just chill out, dude. Just relax, for Christ's sake. See, do it. Yeah. Especially, especially, like, at times like this. You know what I mean? We need to put all that, all that stuff aside and just... Uh, you know... Like, everyone, everyone, likes to, everyone likes to make things political and stuff. It's just like... Yeah, like not, right now, we... We should look at our safety, our health and safety right now. Yeah, not everything's not everything's a big political thing, you know. Sometimes it is. Sometimes there's weird shit happening, but not all the time. Yeah. But but like, those, I don't know if you ran into like those deep political nutcases though. I just wanted to say everything is straight up political. I just don't have the time. Like, I I just just I just go all right, dude. Cool. Like I, I'm not. I can't. Like I'm not. I'm not the guy that, that you know. We don't. Even the people who are all about the po- political argument. It's like, dude, you don't know. Like you don't know what's going on. You're just a dude reading yeah. shit on Facebook or whatever. You don't know. Yeah, exactly. Like get a hold of yourself, yeah, dude. Just because you read some yeah, weird articles, yeah. you don't know. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I don't like looking at like social media as a no. news source. I don't like that. You know I use I mean? Instagram just to plug the show and shit like that. I don't go. I don't know none, none of the Facebook no more. None of that. No time. Yeah, I honestly only look at Facebook. When I just want to look at memes now. Honestly, That's it. I don't even. I only have like thirty friends, dude. I, I follow more meme pages. That's <laughs> what Reddit's for. Reddit's for the memes. <laughs> Oh, Reddit? Yeah, yeah, I should actually check that out. Reddit's for the memes, dude. You'll never go on Facebook again. Endless memes on Reddit. I'm going to check it out because I haven't really been too deep in the internet and like oh. stuff like that. So I've heard of Reddit, though. I'll well, Reddit, I mean, there's a corner for anything on Reddit, so be careful. You go down a rabbit <laughs> hole, man. Anything you want to see down there is there. It's dangerous. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, man, man, you said you're doing a podcast? Yeah, yeah. I, is there any way I could look you up? you have, like, a channel or something? Yeah, well, I, I, I do it on, I do it live on Twitch. It's actually, uh, I record it live on Twitch, and I'm recording live on Twitch right now. 
and okay. then I put it out to YouTube tomorrow. And I'm on Instagram. If you want to check it out, you check my YouTube, and you can check all the previous states and shit. Yeah, for sure. What's your What's your YouTube, man? Uh, if you go to Bits and Bites, B I T S A N D B I T E S dot U S, it'll bring you right to the page. U S Bits and Bites. Uh, that'll yeah. bring you to. Uh, um, yeah, that'll bring you. I look into you, man. You seem like you're doing some interesting bits. Thanks, dude. Oh, cool. I appreciate that. That'll bring you to the YouTube page with the playlist with every state. And I said I do it live on Twitch, but I only use Twitch really as the platform to just like get live people in the yeah, chat and talk yeah, and shit. I kind of stopped. I stopped with Twitch. Maybe when those hot tub streams started getting a little out of control. I just, yeah. Like, right, Twitch is just doing too much stuff. So I'm just gonna get off of this. It's good. <laughs> it's good for community and stuff because like you can go live. Like there's people in the chat now chatting, and that's just fun and cool. So it just gets more awareness. But I don't. I don't yeah. really fuck with. Twitch yeah, Sorry, well, Twitch. YouTube, though, I'm a big YouTube head, so for sure, I'll, you know, I mean, I'll look you up on there. Thanks, dude. I'm the pretty sure I'll stop, man. I'm pretty sure you seem interesting. Like, this is a pretty good topic you've been doing. Thanks, so dude. I, I, like everyone else I talk to, everyone else I talk to, I tell I'm doing a podcast, not one person has asked the name of it or anything. No one cares. But they have talked oh, to me, bro. but no one asked. I mean, <laughs> I mean, do they listen to that? Did you ask them if they even listen to podcasts? Like, no. People, I, like, no, it's hard yeah, enough. It's Because <laughs> usually, I, I usually have a guest and I'll schedule it and I'll have a call. But if I don't have a guest, I just start calling places and just see if people want to chat. I'm like, you're cool. We're talking. This is great. Then sometimes you get people, <laughs> yeah. sometimes you don't. And it's just like, again, I'm just trying to talk to someone in New Mexico. Hey. You're cool. I'm just getting a New Mexico vibe. Like, that's all I'm just trying to do. Yeah. Man, that's really noble, though, that you're, you're trying to put yourself out there. I can literally commend that because I'm, like, seriously considering streaming, too, in the future. So, like, that's, that's commendable. That's, like, that gives me motivation to just, if I already dip into it, keep trying to put myself out there. Dude, I just do it every week. I don't care how many viewers, watchers, whatever. It's just fun as shit to do. This is fun. I got off work. I'm doing it late. Usually I don't do it this late. Well, it's late here, but... It's just fun to do, man. I mean, I'm literally eating... I'm eating huevos rancheros with green chili. I got a bottle of... I got a bottle of fucking bubbly from New Mexico. I'm drinking it and I'm calling talking to New Mexico people. This is my night. Dude, that sounds awesome, man. That sounds like a great night. That is, I'm so jealous right now. I'm stuck here at work I'm oh. hearing this. I'm like, oh, well, take me away from here. Well, all right, here's what you can do. Go to the website, follow me on YouTube, send me a message yeah. or whatever. Get at me on Instagram or whatever, send me a message, dude, and fucking join the call, join any time and call in or whatever and, and chat and start streaming. Bro, Streaming's fun, dude. Definitely. Do it. Yeah. Dude, I'm definitely going to look you up, man. Right after this, I'm not even kidding. Look like, it I, up. I work nights. I ain't doing shit. I will look you subscribe, up. Subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube or send me a message on there. And I'm on Instagram, too, at the Billy Vegas. I put all the clips and shit on there, too. So if you got the Instagram. For on sure, it. man. And hey, I, I'm sorry about digressing, but I mean. <laughs> no, it's all good. Food, Dude, so it's a, there's no, uh, th again, there's no thing. There's no digression. But, oh, oh, so we talk about food for a minute. What about drinks? Is there like a bit? I know there's like a lot of wine in Arizona. There's like a lot of wine in New Mexico. Like, New Mexican grown wine? Is that a thing? Yeah. Well, well what, no, honestly, I haven't heard anything big on drinks, which was what I was going to mention to you. Like, right. I haven't heard anything, like, special about drinks here in New Mexico. Not every is, state like, has something. That is another thing that's actually, like, you know I mean, striked my curiosity, which is, I'm just like, dude, that's pretty sick. Like, this guy actually asked me that, because like, I never thought about that. Is, New Mexico has any famous drinks. Is so, there, like, brewer? I, there has to be, like, a lot of breweries or something out there and shit. Like, that's at least, like, a um, local thing. I mean... There's definitely someone making a green chili lager somewhere. There's got to be <laughs> some fucking well, dude. I, I do know, like, we get some, like, some Mexican beers, like, just straight up imported from Mexico. But I'm pretty sure a lot of places do that. What, I, what kind of beers? Like, anything outside, like, Seoul and Corona? Like, what do you got? Yeah, and, like, the Gata and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that's like, everywhere. I don't, even think yeah. They, I don't even think they make that in Mexico anymore. That's all made somewhere else, and they ship it out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I, I wouldn't know about the drinks, man. I can't tell you. I'm That's not really fair. much of a drinker of alcohol, too, it's so all good. I wouldn't really know much. That's all good. You, you've, been, you've been a great guest, bro. It's all good. Don't worry. <laughs> No problem, man. I wish I wish I could talk longer, though. For real, I <laughs> back to work, bro. I'm bothering you. It's all good. I ain't got shit to do. But I appreciate you oh, doing man. it. Hey, dude, shoot me a message and shit. Give me an Instagram or whatever. I'm putting this up tomorrow yeah, so you can watch it. Definitely, I'm the New Mexico guy. I'm gonna reach out. Hit me <laughs> up. Yeah, bro. What I'm was, gonna look you up right now. What man. was your, What was your name, bro? Uh, my name is Carlos. Carlos, awesome dude, Billy. Thank Billy. you, Carlos. You're yeah, the man. Bro. Uh, yeah, yeah. You have a good night, Billy. You stay safe, bro. You, you too, brother. Be cool out there. Be I'm good. Take it yep, easy. No problem, man. Be good, boss. Yep. Fucking that guy fucking ruled. Also, first guy to ask what show. First guy to ask what. First guy that I had to self plug. 
the fucking show do. No one else have I talked to asked what show they're going to be on. <laughs> and I was honest. He asked. I told him we're live right now. <laughs> Carlos! Carlos. Carlos gets that fucking applause hitter. And he wants to stream. Now watch Carlos takes off. He's going to start streaming. Fucking blow right past me. One day have me on a show when I'm a 60-year-old man. Talk about this call-in session. Throw me a bone. Get 10 more followers. Move on with my life. Thanks, future Carlos. Well, that was great. The hotels are working well. Late-night hotels seem to be not the worst idea. I don't believe the hotels were two for two on hotels. I feel like we should go for the trifecta. No? Chat, we go for the trifecta? Let me dig into this again. Look at this goddamn huevos. Come on. Look at these huevos! All right, 843 Rebel TV. 843 Rebel TV. If you want to call in and chat, feel free. If not, oh, you fuck. It's fine. Carlos is fantastic. I, I feel like we got to go for the trifecta. Let's go for it. One more. I feel like we call like a higher end hotel establishment. We might not get as lucky. I kind of want to go, you know, I like the outside, the main city, but maybe we call, we didn't call anything in Albuquerque. We call Las Vegas, we called Super South New Mexico. Let's get into Albuquerque. Hotel Chaco. The Hotel Chaco looks like it's in... Old West, Old Town, Albuquerque. What time is it out there? Next time we do one of these shows, I want a, a clock in the corner that tells me the time. 11 o'clock, the two hours. So let's call the hotel at 11 o'clock. Let's call Hotel Chaco. Not the cheapest hotel. Late check-in, 4 p.m. I feel like we're on fire. Let's go for it. Calling Hotel Chaco, downtown Albuquerque. Thank you for calling Hotel Chaco, a heritage hotel and resort. For reservations, please press 1. Sales and catering, press 2. Level 5, this, press 3. This is the kind of place they're going to get in trouble talking to me. Press 4. But we're going to go. Let's guest try. services, press 5. Yeah, guest services. That's me. I'm a guest. I need a service. Oh, I'll tell them I'm in a room. You are being transferred to guest services. Mm. Red chili. <clears throat> Thank you for calling Hotel Chaco. Does Nas begin? How may I help you? Hey, uh, how you doing? What's your name? Uh, Nas. Nas, how you doing? My name is uh, Billy, and I'm doing a show on the food and drink of New Mexico. I was just trying to talk to somebody from New Mexico if you had a minute. If not, no worries. Uh, not at the moment. All right, all good. No worries, man. Have a good night. You too. Bye bye. Yeah, I don't. You know, I could just tell. Like the vibe we're getting there. They're not trying to fucking chill out. Let's just poke around. We're two for three. Give me a minute. Let's get like a bed. Bed and brew. Painted lady. Hmm. Breakfast is overrated. Dot com. Okay. That's kind of like my mantra. I don't like... This is like a borderline restaurant, but I kind of want to call. I think breakfast is overrated. I say it all the time on at Hack Chef. Follow me on Instagram, at Hack Chef. I feel like breakfast is overrated. I feel like it's calling me. I feel like we have to make the call. Let's hope the gods are with me. Let's hope the... Um... 
The phone call gods are with me. Calling Painted Lady Bed and Brew, downtown Albuquerque. <clears throat> Let's go, game face. Breakfast is definitely overrated. That's a whole separate show, but de breakfast is most definitely overrated. I love that that's right on the sign here. Ghost Adventures? Oh, they're probably not going to talk to us. Welcome to the brothel. We, we, we're... Thank you for calling Painted Lady Bed and Brew in sunny Albuquerque, New Mexico, where a quart of ale is a dish for a king. Please leave your name, phone number, and message, and we will get back. I'm not doing that. I'm not leaving a message. We did have a guest lined up for the show. You know, we're going to, you know, it's hard to get guests. It's tough to get guests sometimes, you know? It requires a lot of time and effort to reach out to a guest, explain yourself what you're doing, vet them, make sure they're good. Same for them to vet us. And then schedule a time, especially when the other side of the country. It's difficult. We had someone lined up. I don't know who it was from New Mexico, but it just didn't work out because it's hard. You know, our schedules are tough. Their schedules are tougher. It's hard out here, you know. Last class. Um, I mean, we got to go for one more. We got to get someone in, in Albuquerque. I feel like I feel like we can do it. I feel like we could do it. I feel like we could find a hotel in Albuquerque with a sleepy front desk worker um, with the enthusiasm of Carlos. Not nearly as cool as Carlos, obviously, but someone with a vibe. Hotel Andalus. That sounds expensive. None of these corporate places are going to work. We need like a fucking, you know. So right in the outskirts of town. Microtel in. Now that's corporate, but it's a microtel and it's outside of town. That's like the low end Wyndham, I think. All right, we're going to roll it. I mean, if you can't talk to the front desk clerk at a microtel in in the middle of Albuquerque at midnight, what can you do anymore? Thanks, COVID. Calling Microtel Inn Suites by Wyndham, downtown Thank you Albuquerque. Calling Microtel Inn and Suites by Wyndham, Albuquerque West. To make a reservation, press 1. To modify an existing reservation, press 2. Mm -mm. To speak to the front desk mm -hmm. or for any other inquiry, mm -hmm. please press 3. I have an inquiry. Big inquiry. Thanks for the follow, G. Hit me with a question in the chat. I'll hit him with it. Let's go. Cross them fingers. Cross them digi fingers. Thank you for choosing my hotel in suites. My name is John. How can I help you? Hey, John. How you doing? I'm doing good. How can I help? That's good. Uh, my name's Billy, and I do a weekly podcast on different states and their food and drink. And I was just trying to talk to somebody in New Mexico about some food and drink because I'm not from New Mexico. I don't know much about it. The only thing I really know is green chili. So I was just trying to talk to somebody from New Mexico. I thought I'd call somebody if you got a minute. Just trying to ask about the food and drink in New Mexico. Uh, sorry, I'm not exactly like an expert in that, and that's not really something I'd. I just eat what I like. That's that's all that there is to it. That's all good. I mean, you could eat. What you, do you like the green chili? Is the green chili good out there? I mean, that's a good. As long as it's good. All right, good is good. We want good green chili. Really for the matter. Well, we want good green chili, not bad green chili. That's for sure. All right, man. Well, thank you. Back to it, brother. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you. I mean, fuck that guy, really. That's all I have to say in the matter. Ugh. Hey, look, a fork. What do you say? <laughs> How many... Newtons is your pressure. <laughs> this is this is why we love Twitch chat. 
Also, why is food in New Mexico so bad? I don't know. Is it? I Everyone I've talked to, well, let's be honest. The one guy said you should eat Mexican food in New Mexico, which negates New Mexican food. The other chick said, I don't like green chili, which is the thing. And she said the food's like whatever there. So uh, the natives aren't really loving New Mexican food. Let's be fair. Is this man arrested the back of can numbers? Yeah, that's me. I am. I'm calling the back of cans, I guess. I don't know. Uh, we're calling hotels. We had a very good successful run, but apparently in Albuquerque, it's hard to find someone to talk to. I don't know. Do we do one more? Do we just call it? We've been, you know, we're on here for an hour. We, we, hit, the, we hit the quota. I just feel like I'm waiting for that. You know, I just think the thing is, I just think the thing is every other episode, we at least chatted with a guest or randomly phone called somebody who gave us some good data. I feel like we didn't get the data this episode. I feel like we're not getting the breakdown of the state. No one's telling us that New Mexico's broke down by. Yeah, if it was daytime, we could call a museum again and maybe get a museum person. They're pretty good at that, but we're not getting much. No one even got my Breaking Bad references at these fucking places. You would think you're from New Mexico, you'd be all about the Breaking Bad hits. Let's call the Sunset Motel. That looks sad and lonely on a highway outside of Albuquerque. Let's call them. Let's wake up the front desk clerk there and see if we can get some information. If not, we got to say that's that, I think. Let's go with it. Sunset Motel. Calling the Sunset Motel. Um, I think it's Albuquerque. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's loud. No, Moriarty, New Mexico. Interesting name. Moriarty! All right, with the volume. Calm down. Let's go to the website. Let's get this hotel. Uh, Sunset Motel. Hey, how you doing? Um, my name's Billy, and I'm doing a podcast on the food and drink of every different state. And I'm talking about New Mexico food. I'm trying to find out a little bit of information about green chili and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm sorry. We're closed. Okay. Yeah, I was I was just trying to ask you if you were from New Mexico. No, oh, he hung up. <laughs> I'm sorry we're closed. I was like, yeah, I got that. I'm not obviously I'm not calling for fucking uh Motel information, sir. I kind of want to like keep calling and harassing that guy, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I call again and again and keep saying the same thing. <laughs> oh, what a dick. Me, not him. Ah. One more? Ah, we're rolling dice here. I mean, we're on borrowed time. It don't matter. Uh, the show's done. We're in the can. Let's let's go a little bit more out of town. I know they're closed, but I mean, why are some people really open to it? And some people, old timers, really not. Let's call another Motel 6. Motel 6 in the southwest as well. Motel 6, Espanola, New Mexico. I don't fucking know. Let's see. Now, this will be the last one. Or thank you. Let's see where this gets us. Calling Motel 6, Espanol, New Mexico. Sorry to wake you up. Come on, let's get a good one. Cross them fingies. Uh, hi, how you doing? Yes, how can I have you, sir? Um, I just had a couple questions about the food and drink of New Mexico. Um, I'm doing a podcast. Do you have a minute? Do you like green chili? I don't know anything about... What was that? I don't know anything. What are you asking? Oh, I, I run a podcast about the food and drink of every state, and I'm doing one on New Mexico. So I just I had... don't know anything. I don't know. You know about the food in New Mexico? Okay. All right. No worries, man. Sorry to bother you. I mean, what we've learned is there's some rude people in New Mexico. You know, yeah, we're calling you in the, at maybe, yeah, we're calling you at at midnight ish your time. Um, I don't know. Turn up the charm, chat says. <laughs> How am I turn up the charm? That was pretty smooth. I mean, that guy. I mean, you could tell. I've been doing this for a minute. You could tell when they pick up the phone if you got a chance. It's like fishing. 
I've never caught a fish in my life, for the record. You know, you, you pull in, you put the hook, you set the hook. Sometimes you know the hook set. Sometimes you got dick. We're not setting hooks. We set hooks on the other two. We're setting no hooks any on this Albuquerque run. Build a rapport. You're talking the rapport G. I'm a fucking salesman at heart. I'll fucking sell barbecue baby back ribs with hatch green chili fucking salsa all over it to a fucking old New Mexican grandmother in white gloves. <laughs> Check the Minnesota episode. You don't believe that. So Minnesota, where's the Mall of America? Check that episode. See me sell some sizzle. I held up the goddamn line at the Mall of America. All right? Talking about whatever the hell we were talking about. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Fuck it. We said it was the last one, but let's just go one more. Just one more. We got, I think, I think the problem is this. We hit way outside of, New, of, of uh, Albuquerque, and uh, Albuquerque is just not... Um, not what we're looking for. Yeah, we gotta go to these fucking border towns. Like, two... What the fuck town is this? We gotta go to the Days Inn by Wyndham in Tukumakari. What the fuck towns? All right, we'll call it Days Inn, Wyndham, Tukumakari. We're really grasping at straws here. But I will take your advice, chat. I will build a rapport. I will get their name. And I will sell the proverbial sizzle to these people. Maybe I haven't been trying. I gotta go back and watch the game tape. Maybe I didn't try hard enough with the last two guys. You tell me that last guy, though, wasn't one... Sleeping. Okay? Being nice. And two... Had no information for me? Let's be honest. Come on. That guy was... No matter how much fucking sizzle I was selling, that guy had nothing for me. Call on the days in by Wyndham Tukumakari. <phone rings> Corporate chains have protocols, but those are the ones we've had success with in New Mexico so far, surprisingly. I agree with you, though. <phone rings> Carlos was mur murdered this place. Carlos marked. Shout out to Carlos. He just started his Twitch stream, I'm sure. And we're waking someone up. Four four rings in on a day's in. We're definitely waking someone up. Five rings. Whoever answers doesn't want to talk to us. Next. Super 8 Wyndham Fort Sumner. I mean, if we didn't get an answer, I'm going to call that as a, that's a no contest. That's not, that doesn't go with the ratings. No contest. We're going to call Super 8 by Wyndham and Fort Sumner. Let's effing go. Thank you for calling Super 8 by Wyndham Fort Sumner. To make a reservation. That's way too excited. Press 1. No. To modify an existing reservation. Press two. Bye, to speak to the front desk or for any other inquiry. Let's this draw. Please press three. The front desk. Please press three. To speak to the front desk. All right, aggressive ring. Calm down. Let's one more. Oh boy. How about help you? Hey, how you doing? Um, my name's Billy. What's your name? Cool. Oh, my name's Billy. I was just saying, hi, how you doing? What's your name? Good, how are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm doing a show on the food and the... Hello? Yes. Hey, yes. yeah, I'm doing a podcast on the food yeah. and the drink of New Mexico, and I thought I would ask somebody who lives in New Mexico about green chili and other foods in New Mexico if you've got a minute. Uh, no, sir. And we, we don't want any advertising or nothing, sir. Okay. Yeah, no, not advertising. Just like, you know, what green chili's like and stuff like that. But that's okay. No worries. It's not a telemarketed call. Just just want to chat with someone in New Mexico. Uh, sure. All good. Thank you, buddy. Have a good night. Be safe. 
These fucking New Mexicans. What are they all messed up? What are they doing? Breaking bad shit? Just wanted to fit in more Breaking Bad references. All right, one more. This is getting boring. I mean, we got. We, we should watch it. Let's watch a video. Enough calls. Break on the calls. We're enjoying this fine Jacqueline Leon brute. Let's just not be a fucking prank phone call show. That's what I feel like we're turning into. It's not pranks. Uh, we covered the hatch. Delicious. We we did not eat the Zia product, but let's look at their website for a minute. The um, Harvest Fresh Hatch Chili. Um, this product looks pretty good. I'll be fair. I got it from Whole Foods. Family owned, operated, blah, 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 blah. Uh, hatch Chili Salsa. Cool. It looks like they're in magazines. All these websites look like you could just buy the, the, this website from anywhere. All right, let's watch this video. Talk to me. Zia Hatch Chili Company. My name is Nathaniel Kotanch. Okay. Terrible name. Change the name. Thought one. No, don't get, don't get, just link me to the... Founder of Zia Green Chili Company. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, give me the whole video. My name is Nathaniel... Why? Just play the video and put the fucking banner away. My name is Nathaniel Kotanch. Founder of Zia Green Chili Company. New Mexico is an incredibly special place in my soul. But this is already better than half of the hotels we called. It's a land of breathtaking contrast. So what the fuck is going on with this video? What the fuck? Open a new tab. Fucking Jesus Christ. My name is Nathaniel Kotanch, founder of Zia Green Chili Company. Should call this fucking guy. New Mexico is an there incredibly special place in my soul. My soul. It's a land of breathtaking contrasts. Is it? Contrasts of bone white desert dunes to snowy mountain summits. Okay. Of pleasant homes of adobe to sunlit plains as far as you can see. Of beautiful rocky canyons to flat fields of farmland that grow the heart. Again, this guy sounds like he's reading from a script. I mean, that's fine. I understand he probably is. Uh, but look at those chilies. Beautiful chilies. I mean, we're here for the food. Looks good. Of the state. Chili. My mom is one of 17 from north of Santa Fe, and my fondest life memories include- Wait, his, mo his mom's one of 17 children? Damn. Damn, girl. One of 17. Not one. Not two. Not three. Not four. Not five. Not six. Not seven. Not eight. Not nine. Not ten. Not 11, not 12, not 13, not 14, not 15, 16, not 16, one of 17 children. Holy shit. A lot of fucking in New Mexico. All right, going on. Food growing up with the comforting smell of chilies roasting every fall when our house would be filled with green chili from Hatch. This is what I'm talking about, though. We open the show, talk about the hatch chilies. This is what's up. I mean, outside of the 17, that's just a crazy number. I mean, it must be Mormon. Um, the hatch chili is definitely uh, a thing. Um, <laughs> chat, basically dedicating your life to procreation. Yeah, I mean, at that point, you're, I mean, 17 children, that takes you... At least, let's do the math on that, minimum 17 years if you're having a child and then getting pregnant within three months 17 times in a row. Hatch! It all makes sense now! <laughs> Holy shit. Southern Valley of Hatch produces chili that is so deep-rooted in everything that New Mexico is, yet widely unknown, under-celebrated, and inaccessible outside of the southwest region. Hatch green chilies just provide such a versatile, unmatched, flame-roasted, smoke-kissed, spicy flavor to just about everything that they touch. This guy's covering all of the stuff that I wanted to say about the hatch from someone who lives there. So this is one of the most informative website videos we've played yet on the program. Of all the weeks, I must say, most website uh, videos are just like, you know, wide drone shots with sweeping music and bullshit. This is actually pretty good. He's talking about smoke, kiss, spicy flavor, all the chilies. That's the bit. That is the bit of the hatch chili. That's what's in these cans. That's what's in this product. So cheers to that. 
You can use them in just about anything from making really good red or green sauces to some other dishes in. Yeah, red or green sauce. And with sautés, stews. Peep these red or green dishes, sauces, you know what I'm talking about? Simply topping off a guacamole or a green chili margarita. Green really chili margarita? my heart that lies in this valley. And its story is one that I want the nation to hear, see, and taste. Uh, I can't lie. I That, again, is one of the most informative website narrative videos that I've seen that tells you... I mean, it didn't give you express detail about the product, but it was a fair amount of detail um, for a website video. So cheers to that guy. Um, and, uh, you know... Then the Zia product. I use the I, I, I use the Zia. Uh, no, I didn't use the Zia. Sorry. Uh, chilies in my chili that I made. Let's show it again. If anyone is just joining, this is the uh, what's left over of the huevos rancheros that I made. Um, I made a uh, green chili hatch chili sauce and uh, also a red enchilada sauce with the uh, hatch chilies. And we made a authentic huevos rancheros, which is a toasted corn tortilla, tostada situation with refried black beans underneath it, a beautiful fried egg. I put a little avocado on this one. And then what we call Christmas, which is what you do in, in New Mexico. When you go eat in New Mexico, they ask you, would you like the red or the green pill? Or the red or the green sauce. And if you want both, you say, it's fucking Christmas time, baby. Not like that, but you say Christmas and you get red and green. Get it? Red and green. Christmas. So for the New Mexico episode, I'm not from there. I don't know where I'm from there. This is what I did. It seemed like pretty goddamn New Mexican to me. And I ate the whole first one and I put the backup on there. That's how goddamn good it was. And anyone who's watched the show before for all 31 weeks have been fucking doing it. I never eat the whole plate. So kudos to Hatch and kudos to, I'm not even going to say my green chili. My green chili was not nearly as good as the canned red Hatch enchilada sauce, which I would never buy if it wasn't for this stupid show. So, I don't know. Um, you know, anything's possible. This is New Mexican huevos rancheros. There's all the many ways of making huevos rancheros, you know? Who could, who could, who could say? If you look at the New Mexican way of making it, they cover it in cheese and, and and saucy broth, and it looks like a fucking soup. This is a this is a play on it. There's a million ways. Yeah, I mean it is what it is. Everyone makes huevos from churros a million different ways. Please, I would rather chat. Let's not get angry. All right, I know I can see your Mexican uh, mother's rolling in her grave. This isn't huevos from churros. Hey, look, it's a fork said yeah maybe not yours but this is somebody's this is mine all right it's what i grew up with it's not but i just made it because that's what i had and i put it together and it's pretty close there's refried i put refried beans under it there's a fried egg that's beautiful there's a tostada there's some fucking new mexican sauces it's fine we're not here for the huevos or chairs. We're here for the goddamn chili. The Hatch Chili's the bit. The Zia Hatch Chili Company. That video was fantastic. Let's look at their other products. Honestly, I haven't tried this. I'm not even going to open it because I'm going to open it and then the, the clock starts. And I'm not ready. I'm going to save this because I can already tell it's going to be of high quality. So go fuck. We did other stuff. But let's see what else they got. I support this place. Zia Hatch Green Chili, Red Chili. I wish I could get the red. We could have had a party with it, but we didn't. Zia, 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 Zia Hatch Chili. Get it, get some. Big fan. That's pretty goddamn good. What else we got? We got this Rio Luna product, which is another green chili from New Mexico. How many are we going to fucking use here? Um, you know, it's a, it's an organic local version of the Hatch is what, is what it is. The Whole Foods version of the Hatch. Uh, I'll put it in the cupboard. It's fine. It's good for years. It's canned. It's not a big deal. Um... It looks great. It looks like a fucking green chili. Let's go to the uh, the Gruet site again, and um, well, tell me, uh, tell me about your grandmother's way was from Charles. Let's talk about that. I don't want to. I mean, I'm not saying this is the best fucking way was from Charles. Tell me about the real deal. You got the real shit. Let's go. Give me the real shit. I'm not. I'm not putting my name on this. I just made this so I could eat some chili. This, is a, this tostada bean fried egg situation is just a vehicle to consume the New Mexico product. You know what I'm saying? 
The Heisenberg chili, if you will. Mom's was rice, fried eggs, pintos, corn tortillas, hot off the pan, and salsa. Yeah, that's that's that sounds fucking delicious and better than this. But you're not from New Mexico, and she would never probably put garbage hatch silly chili sauce on it. Not garbage, but she would never add this shit to it. That sounds fantastic. Go to New Mexico. This is apparently what they're doing. Something like this. I don't know, dude. But that sounds fantastic. I'm not downplaying it by any means. Exactly. Hatch chilies. You don't even know what hatch chilies are. Come correct. Hatch chilies. This is why we do the show. We do the show to enlighten and learn. Hatch chilies are a chili variety. Okay. What kind of pepper? That's a great question. You see, you come to the show. You come to this program to me. Because I'm the guy who's going to tell you what a hatch chili is. And how am I going to tell you what a hatch chili is? I'm going to pull up a YouTube video and we're going to watch it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do it together. Because I'm not an expert. I've seen them roast them. But that's a great question. What kind of chili is it? I know it's called hatch. But what the hell is it? Tell, I, the hatch chili roaster is a big bit. But tell me about the hatch chili itself. Five things you didn't know about the hatch chili. Pull up the goddamn video. Let's go down the rabbit hole. Not food, mine. Oh, we're gonna get pulled. Let's do it. Oh my God! It's Bo it's our good friend Bobby Flay, friend of the show. Bobby Flay is here. Yes. This makes me so happy. Bobby Flay showed up on the show. Old Bobby Flay also, or old school Bobby Flay. This makes me so happy. Old school Bobby Flay is here, everybody. Don't worry. Let's watch. A smoked chili butter. It's not the first fish that you think of when you go to the fishmonger or actually go to a restaurant. It's a the hell is he talking about? He's talking about hatch chilies. Why is he talking about fucking fish? The hell's going on? Yeah, it's like an, it's an Anaheim pepper. Correct. It's, it's a version of an Anaheim, I think. I think they just call it hatch because they grow it in New Mexico, but correct. It's just like the Anaheim. But Anaheim's in California. Maybe there's an Anaheim, New Mexico. I don't know. The Ray. So, it's, so they call it skate wing. And so, you know, when you see the, the rays, this is my, this is as good as it gets right here in the water. And one side, it's like they're like two triangles. One the side, there's a skate wing, and then, they're, then, the, then the, the, the middle separates. And then, then there's, the other side, there's a skate wing. I season it on both sides with salt. Special guest Bobby Flay in the episode tonight. Put that in the book. Special guest Bobby Flay in the episode. And pepper. And I'm just going to dredge it very lightly. What it's the fuck is he making skate flour. for? So this way, the, the flour is already quell the heat a little bit. Oh, he's making and a hatch. Put the skate right into the pan here. Let that sort of cook through and get nice and crispy. Now, while that's working, we're going to make our chipotle butter. Hey, Bobby it's a smoked Flay. jalapeno. It's a little fiery, a little smoky. What the a fuck? A little bit of honey, just to kind of quell the heat a little bit. And then some softened butter. This is chipotle, bro. It's going to toss this. You want the butter to melt nice. Bobby Flay, yet again, fuck the whole show. He comes out here talking butter chipotle. Bobby Flay, get out of here. Ruining everything. Hatch chilies only come from Hatch, New Mexico. Fact! Uh, they don't have a DOC like Champagne or Parm, but uh, Hatch Valley is the only place you should be getting the chilies. Right, so Hatch is a region. Uh, Hatch chilies are a super versatile ingredient. I could, I could vouch for that. Hatch chilies come in a number of varieties. Uh, Hatch chilies offer an ideal balance of heat and sweetness. I think that is the thing. They're like poblanos, but poblanos to me um, are hot. And they have little sweetness. Whereas the hatch, if you get a fresh one from a roadside, which I have before in Colorado, and I was told it was from hatch. Um, let's pull up the map. Is there, where's Hatch, New Mexico? Give me Hatch, New Mexico. Maybe we call a hotel in Hatch, New Mexico. Um, it's a different product, you know? Yeah, we're going to call the hotel in Hatch. Yeah, that's going down. We're calling the St. Francis de Sal Hatch, New Mexico in an event menu. Well, let's call them now with no further ado. The gods have brought us here. <phone rings> calling St. Francis de Sal's Sales Hatch, New Mexico in an event menu. <phone rings> no, tomatillos are acidic. They're not acidic. 
if you get this, if you get the pure, if you get the pure hatch chili, it's not acidic. There may be a little like citric acid in the can, but it's not. Hello, this is Celeste and Saint Francis Please leave me your message. Thank you. At the tone. We're good. We get it. No one's answering the phone. Um, they're not like tomatillos. They're they're. It's like a it's like a roasted poblano, but with the sweetness of like a good sweet green pepper. I don't want to say Anaheim. It's kind of like an Anaheim. Um, and that the heat is like a it's like a jalapeno heat, like a poblano heat, unique heat. Um, it's good. They're good. They're definitely unique pe- chilies if you like them. If you like chilies. Blake's lot of burger. This is a. Uh, I forgot to even call this. I forgot to even look at this place. This is the place that Carlos told us about. He said you got to go Blake's lot of burger. We well, get it. Social distancing. Distancing. A lot of greatness lives here. I'll be the judge of that. Is that Blake? That don't look like no Blake to me. Could be. Menu. I had no fucking lie. I don't know if I brought this place up on the on the the, the show before. Get out of here. This is why I need a producer. Uh, I don't know if I brought this up on the show before. Um, let's see if it's still there. I know the restaurant's still there, but in Colorado, not New Mexico, it's a place called Bull and Bush Brewery. Uh, I'm sure I've talked about it in the Colorado episode. Check that out at Bits and Bites. B I T S and B I T E S dot U S will bring you right to the YouTube page. Check out the Colorado episode where I talk in depth, I'm sure, about Bull and Bush Brewery. Um, th- uh, the first time I had or experienced a hatch chili was here, and it sticks in my mind. They have burgers there. To Carlos's point, the hatch chili goes on the burger as a gimmick. Um, but they have a burger, which is a good burger, from what I remember. I haven't had it in a minute, but it's a good burger. Um, you know, not like you're not gonna say it's the greatest burger you've ever had, but it's a it's a goddamn good burger, good pub burger. Um, but they use Colorado green chilies. Okay, so that's a separate thing, not hatch. I thought it were hatch. Well, this is a useless story then. In any event, they take the hatch green chilies, which is probably what we're gonna do with this can. Let's be fair. You take it, drain them, mix it in with cream cheese. And usually, again, if you know me, that ain't my scene. I don't like doing that kind of shit. Um, cream cheese mixed in with bullshit is not my scene. But the hatch, the smoked fire roasted hatch cuts through the cream cheese and they put it on their burger out there as a as the cheese component. Or it's not a cheese component. To me, the cheese component of a burger is melty goodness. This wasn't melty goodness. This was just like a layer of other creamy goodness. And the chili bite was in them with the cheese. It was really fucking good. Uh, so if you get a can of Hatch Green Chilies and you don't know what to do, I would suggest draining it, save the juice, maybe make a cocktail out of it. Mm. And um, a spicy green chili margarita with the juice from the Hatch. Just saying. But take the chilies, chop them up, whip it into some uh, cream cheese, and smush a layer of that shit on your burger. Fuck yeah. Now we're talking. I mean, I guess we're done here. There's not much else to be said. I mean, we could keep calling hotels, but let's be honest. It's fucking midnight there. This is the trash that New Mexico tries to pass for their Christmas. Look at this. If I made this for the show, I'd be disgusted with myself. Not because I ate it, because that looks like garbage. I was just like garbage. If I ever go to New Mexico and sit at a restaurant and order the fucking Christmas fucking huevos rancheros, and this shit fucking shows up on my table, I'm gonna just be like, get this out of here and bring me a turkey club with no green chilies. You've ruined everything. You know? Like, that's gross. It looks like a, a, a bowl of salsa soup. Exactly. Well, what the fuck is that, man? There's an egg under there and a, and a half of a sopa pia. Like, what are you doing? It's a disgrace to anything that you would call that. Some Google image search says that this is a fucking huevos rancheros. And that, to me, is a travesty. That's disgusting and sad. But such is the internet. A place of disgusting, sad things. 
Uh, what else? We hit Rio Luna, the organic version of the Hatch. We're big on the Hatch company. Zia, Hatch Chili Company. We haven't even tried your product, but pretty good. Big on Hatch. Hatch, Hatch, Hatch. Hatch brand. If you see that logo, I'm telling you, fucking go for it. The diced green chilies, the whole green chilies, the enchilada sauce. Comes from New Mexico. I think it's pretty goddamn legit. And I think it's also very... Um, uh, ubiquitous. You can get it a lot of places. Holla at you, brother. Hey, look at Fork. Appreciate you, my dude. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. Respect. Thank you, brother. Have a good night. Thank you, bud. Nice words. Oh, nice words. Encouragement. What a nice, wholesome show it's been tonight. We're inspiring guys in New Mexico to start streaming. This guy's being nice. Hey, look at this. We gotta start doing more midnight shows. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, Grew it. We didn't even watch the Grew it video. Let's watch that. Let's watch that. Then we'll call it. Then we'll call it a. Uh, then we'll call it a night. Uh, so Grew it does a lot of sparkling wines. Apparently, apparently they have vintage ones, which is surprising. Non-vintage ones, which is kind of what we're drinking, and the still wines, um, which I'm not interested in. Uh, let's see their video. And again, I, uh, my guess is since we saw a good video tonight, this video is going to blow. But let's let's just go with it. Again, the, especially the the distilleries and the wineries, their their house videos are usually like sweeping drone cameras. I haven't watched this video. I don't know. Please, if you think about, I'm willing to put money that I'm right. This is going to be a video with sweeping drone angles, uh, bad music in the back, and an overdub by someone who works there and or has a good voice, or maybe someone who's like sixth generation grew it. That's how many of these I've seen. Um, let's see. Bring that shit up. Hit it. Start at the top. Gruet Winery is one of America's oh. top spark. Gruet. I'm saying grew it like a fucking asshole. Gruet. Look, you can't. Uh, you're making, you know, like, grew it. I'm going with grew it. This is American champagne, American sparkle wine, and champ in the champagne method. Grew it. Hold on, I want to write something down. Two things, notes for this episode. <clears throat> One, Carlos, great guest. Plus, plus guest. Two, Bobby Flay. Bad guest. Grew it. R U E T, all caps. Test underscore. How. Do you say it? Just put that in the book for uh, future guests. Anyone wants to talk some shit? Because I, I don't give a fuck. I say shit all the time. Uh, <laughs> don't just drink it. <laughs> Grew it. <laughs> ah, next level. You're the best. Don't just drink it. Grew it. Ugh. Don't just drink it. Grue. No. All right, back to the video. Again, sweeping drone angles over uh, overdub and some music coming in. That's maybe great. Who knows? Not Grue great. Winery is Grue? one of America's top sparkling wine producers, Debatable. with roots originating in the Champagne region in Baton, France. Okay. Family patriarch and Champagne producer Gilbert Grue sought to expand his family winemaking legacy far from home. In 1984, Gilbert, along with his wife, Danielle, and four young adult children staked property in winemaking's true Wild West, New Mexico, for Grouet's first American vineyard. Well, we're a quarter through the video, and uh, I'm pretty close. Sweeping angles coming up. An excellent harvest in 1987 led Laurent Grouet, Gilbert's son, to produce Grouet's first Brut and Blanc de Noir. The core collection grew to include a Brut Rosé, Blanc de Blanc, and Demisec, all made in the strict, traditional method champenoise. To have an American sparkling winery like Gruet adhere to French champagne methods underscores exceptional quality and attention <clears throat> from harvest to bottle. Let's just make note here. Um, you can't, you know, for those of you that don't know, you cannot make a sparkling wine in America or anywhere in the world and call it Champagne unless it's made in Champagne, France, which is a very small region. 
So champagne, this is why champagne itself is a very prized and expensive product because it's only made in a very small region of the world. You may buy this and say, yo, I brought some champagne. You didn't. You brought Method Champenois. You brought American sparkling wine. It's called champagne. Um, a lot of places in California also use the same terminology, Method Champenois, because it uses it. You can say it's champagne in that sense. It uses the French Method Champenois uh, process, um, but it's decisively not champagne because it's not using grapes from the Champagne region. It's not using methods adhering to laws in the Champagne region. So they're allowed to say, Hey, we're great because we stick to the ru the rules and the laws of Method Champenois from Champagne. But in reality, they could do whatever the fuck they want and just say they're doing it because this is legally classified as an American sparkling wine, which means you could put some garbage ass Prosecco in there, walk away and just say you did it. There's no legal backing to this product. It's not champagne. It's American sparkling wine. Now, that said, perhaps that's why Gruyere, Gruyere, Gruyere is a cheese. Gruyere is um, a popular product here because maybe they do adhere to strict standards and they do follow the method properly. And their 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 bottles are a couple bucks more because the, the taste shows. And, the you know, if you do follow those methods, you're going to have a great superior product. Maybe they are doing that. I don't drink enough of their shit to know. This isn't even the, this is their their secondary label that they sold to a liquor store near me. So I don't know, but that's the champagne talk. 30 vintages later and counting, Gruet Winery has achieved unprecedented acclaim and remains a sommelier favorite. In blind tastings against the best money can buy, Gruet stands out. The wine beautiful. Spectator has bestowed the Blanc de Noir 90 points and a top 100 wines of the world spot. Another 90 point score for the Brut and top 100 values for the Brut, Blanc de Noir, Brut Rosé, and the Sauvage Blanc de Blanc. Sauvage. Uncork unrivaled quality and value. Make it Gruet every day. I mean, this isn't bad. I've drank great champagne. Not to my own horn here, but I, I've had I've been fortunate enough to drink very high quality, both vintage and non-vintage champagnes, and they're you know. Uh, people always talk about great champagne, and until you have it, you don't know what the hell people are talking about. Because I've always heard about it, I've taken classes on it, um, I've learned about the methods and stuff like that, but um, I never had it. I've had great wines and stuff like that, but great champagne to get your hands on is difficult, it's expensive, and you know, generally that's not what I'm looking for, what I'm going to drink. But I found myself in certain situations in life where I was able to try some fantastic real deal champagnes. And, um, yeah, there's a big difference. When you start drinking that stuff, I mean, the first time I had it was, um, the first time I had real, real deal champagne. I mean, I've had, like, Dom P and, um, yeah, Dom Perignon, um, a couple vintages and stuff like that. But years and years ago, I was actually with, uh, not to name drop from another episode, but, uh, Sir Augie Carton, Carton Brewing. <coughs> <coughs> drinking with him and uh he laid we were talking about champagne i was telling him a similar thing like i just said i was like i don't think i've ever had a great I, I, I think what i was saying was i never had a great champagne that blew my mind like i never had a champagne that really made me think you know this is the this is why you people spend money on champagne this is why champagne is its own legal classification this is why it's that good and he laid a bottle on me i have a picture of it still i don't know the brand or make or whatever it was it wasn't dom p and it wasn't Maybe it's popular in the champagne world. I'm not sure, but we popped it, and he he was stoked to lay it on me because he knew I never had it. And um, I mean, I remember vividly drinking it. It was like drinking um, butter. It was like bu bubbly butter, and not in a Chardonnay way, like where some oaky Chardonnays are buttery. That's not what it was like. It was like the texture and the mouthfeel and the bubbles, like everything about it was really spectacular so if you ever find yourself in a position to have fantastic true champagne and you've never had it like real i don't even know what that what quantifies as that but if you're in a position where you can get yourself some real deal champagne that's been taken care of and handled properly 
if you've never had it and you're interested in that kind of shit, it's worth a couple bucks to try it. Because um, it, it, it is a treat. And it's definitely something I think you've never had. This is great, but nothing I've had, even the great American-made sparkling wines, come close to those tastes of real deal Dom P. And that, the first time I had that, whatever it was, um, nothing comes close to that. Um, and we drank the bottle, and then he popped another one, and then I think we started doing um, black and tans with that very expensive champagne and uh, his milk stout. But, you know, such is life. I mean, that was also delicious, too. Uh, cheers to that night. Cheers to the Augie Carton. Cheers to the New Jersey episode up last week. I don't know if we'll get the numbers on it, but that was a fun one. We're in the new states. New Jersey. We're in New Mexico now. And then we got another state coming up next we'll talk about. I don't know what else we could do here. We're talking about Gruay. You know, we made a lot of phone calls. We talked to some people out there. You know, we're hitting the clock. Look, we fast forward. Here's the bird. All right? It's the fucking lowly uh, greater roadrunner. Have we learned anything? Have we learned maybe that the difference between these roadrunners is similar to the difference between green chili and red chili? You know, this roadrunner is one. This is another roadrunner. And here's another one. You know, just because your green chili or your grandmother's green chili happens to have pork in it or rice in it or beans in it and she makes it a different way, doesn't mean we knock this this one out, you know? We keep that one around. Perhaps you do both. Perhaps you do a little bit of what they call the Christmas where you get a little bit of the red and a little bit of the green. And you put them both together. In what we would consider a beautiful combination, artwork, some may say, of beautiful chilies and New Mexican cuisine in uh, on one plate. I don't know. Is New Mexico one of the states that really shows the uh, beautiful bounty of the melting pot that America is? I don't know. Carlos tells us that they got the greatest Mexican food around. I'm not surprised. I mean, they border Mexico. He said, fuck green chili also. I mean, I thought green chili is a thing. So I'm really all over the place here. I don't feel like we've gotten any conclusive facts on New Mexico. Um, I feel like we owe this state another revisit, but who could say? Um, anything is possible in this world. I don't know what else to say. I think we did a goddamn good job tonight of covering New Mexico. We hit the green chilies, which I think is the ubiquitous thing that everyone knows. Um, I ate way too much of the huevos rancheros, or whatever we call it. Uh, thoroughly enjoying the New Mexican American sparkling wine. Um, you know, I, I think that's it uh, for New Mexico. I'm going to call it New Mexico week 31. I don't believe this is week 31. Holla at the old mass blaze. Thank you, brother. Look at that follow. I mean, there's people out there watching. I don't even know. I can't watch the numbers anymore. Ain't nobody got time for that. What's up, boss? Holla to the chat. Oh, my God. It's, oh God, it's so late. I don't like time stating the um, time stamping the recording because I do this. And I put it on YouTube where it lives, where it lives forever. So if it's living forever, I don't really want to, like, timestamp it. But we did start the show at midnight, and it is 2 a.m. Uh, but we were calling New Mexico, and they're two hours behind, so it's midnight there. So, we, you know, some potty call or something. I'm going to call it week 31, New Mexico in the bag. I think we did good work tonight. As good as we could do. I think we covered uh, green chili fairly enough. Again, I'm not bragging here, but uh, my huevos from churros covered in my green chili and the red chili sauce. So pretty fucking good. Um, I'm going to just plug the Hatch products. This Hatch brand chilies, big fan. Uh, highly recommend getting your hands on them. I'm telling you these are good. I've been using them for quite some time. I haven't tried the Whole Foods fucking whole organic brand. I'm sure it's great, but the Hatch is probably much more nationally found. Highly recommended. Uh, get your hands on it. Gruet Jacques Leon Brut. Delicious uh, sparkling. Last glass. Uh, sparkling bubbly. Very good. I don't know what else we could do here. We call a lot of hotels. We talk to some interesting, fun people. Um, I think that's it. 
I mean, I wanted to touch some base on uh, the first atomic bomb. We didn't talk about that. And it's uh, not legal to dance with a sombrero. That seems insensitive. I don't know if you're allowed to do that. You can't even say that anymore. I don't know. Uh, there's a volcano in New Mexico where you can see five different states. Week 31 in the bag. That's what we're calling it. Week 31, New Mexico in the bag. Where does that bring us next? Who could say? Week 31, New Mexico. Dunzo. I got to start knocking these off. We've accomplished enough on this on this chart that we need to start scratching these off. Because I, I look at it and I got to follow my eyes and it's a blur. Week 30, New Jersey, done. Week 31, New Mexico in the bag. Week 32 on deck, New York and New York motherfucking city. Week 33, North Carolina, North Dakota, and that ends the ends. Wow, New York next week. What are we going to do for New York? Wow, I don't know. I do know. I have a very special guest for New York. And I am so excited for you guys to see the interview that I did with this hero of mine of New York. Champion of New York City. Uh, I was so happy uh, when he got back to me and said he was interested in doing the show. Um, and then I was worried that the schedules weren't going to line up. He's a globetrotting man. And uh, luckily it did. And uh, it's going to be a good one. New York episode is going to be a good one. We got we got a true New York G for the for the uh, for the New York episode coming up this week. Um, but you know the, the episode's not done. That's a that's a that's a recorded interview segment that I have, uh, and there's a lot of boroughs, and that man represents Manhattan. Ain't no question about it. Uh, but there's other boroughs. There's other things to talk about. New York, New York's a big ass state. So always looking for other people in New York. Uh, we have a little bit of time. I'm still waiting to hear back from some other people. It might be a very long show. Uh, who could say? But it's okay. The beauty of the internet is it don't matter. Week 31, New Mexico in the bag. New Mexico, thank you for Albuquerque. Thank you for all the songs about New Mexico and Albuquerque. Thank you for Breaking Bad scenery. Very beautiful and cool. Thank you for uh, Hatch Green Chilies. I mean, really good job. Really spicy, chilly, smoky, delicious. Very good. Hatch is a product. Fantastic. New Mexico, you also grow a lot of grapes, apparently. Just like your neighbor, Arizona, you were a sneak attack. Uh, with letting us know that you grow wine. Uh, I didn't get any of your still wines and didn't really deep dive in any of your wineries, but grew a, as the producers say, or uh, grew it, makes a fantastic sparkling wine that I got to say, it's in the method of uh, uh, Champagne Francois, and uh, it's very delicious. This uh, Jacqueline Le Leon version that I picked up at uh, Total Foods, it was very tasty. Week 31 in the bag, New Mexico. You've been great. Your flag, also fantastic. One of my favorite. I love a flag like this. We didn't even look into the meaning of it or anything like that, but let's just go ahead and say it represents the chilies. Um, New Mexico, you're an interesting state. Uh, thank you to those who picked up and talked to us. No thanks to our scheduled guests who didn't call in. It's all good. Still love you, though. Um... Uh, what else? What are we missing? Week 31 in the bag. Uh, you could watch this episode tomorrow and all previous 30 weeks, every state 30 weeks back. The backlog is on YouTube at bitsandbytes.us. Brings you right to the YouTube page. Follow, subscribe, upvote, downvote, comment, shit talk, do what you got to do. I don't care. Just go there, click the button. You can follow me on Instagram at, at the Billy Vegas or at Hack Chef, depending on what it is you're looking for from me. And uh, that's going to be it for Week 31, New Mexico. Week 32 is on deck, coming up hot. New motherfucking York. New York is on deck. Lots to cover New York. I mean, if you don't think I'm showing up with pizza, I don't know what to tell you. It's definitely gonna be a pizza involved. At least there's so much beautiful food. I mean, 
New York's an exciting state. I mean, we talked a little bit in this episode about the melting pot situation. You can't make up the melting pot that is New York. I mean, that is the... That, I mean, that's where that whole concept started. I mean, again, very stoked about our special guest for New York. I can't wait to tell you guys about it. I'll be uh, posting about when we're doing the show this week on Instagram at the Billy Vegas. Follow me there. Uh, Twitch folk in the chat, thank you so much. Thanks for the new followers, new subs, all that stuff. You guys are great. Appreciate you. Super shout out. Next level, Jerry O. You the man. Um, good show. Late night show. Fun. Uh, as expected, I did think that the late night show would bring in a lot more people to chat, and um, it did. Who would think that morning shows don't work? Stunning. Uh, week 31, New Mexico in the bag. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you, everybody, in the chat. Y'all all the best. This will be on YouTube tomorrow morning. I just keep saying it because I'm going to clip this stuff up, and I don't know which one's going to sound good. So that's why I keep repeating it at the end. If you haven't figured out how we do this show yet, I don't know what to tell you. Um, that's why I repeat it again. And, I'll, and I'm going to do it one more time. Here we go. Week 31 in the bag. New Mexico, you're a great state. Next week, New York. I'll see you there. And then, can't get enough, the fucking Big Apple is on the table. Let's fucking go.